Let's take a look at the team stats from this past week. 240 yards, total yards. 108 passing yards. Ugh. 132 rushing yards. We have more rushing yards than passing yards. Unreal. We did average more per play, yards per play. We only allowed one sack. And I know that people were saying there was like a stat that was going around like, you know, you know, the offensive line for the Giants has been much maligned over the first five weeks, but they only allowed five pressures in the game against Washington. It's like, yeah, but we only passed the ball 19 times <laughs> and we allowed a sack and a pressure. So it was like almost, <laughs> it's not a great percentage to say the least, but it, only the one sack. And it was a, it was a big one, you know, when they were in around the ten yard line and could have could have scored. We said that Matt Parrott started for Andrew Thomas. He's he was the according to PFF the highest graded player for the Giants offense yesterday with twenty five or more snaps, graded at eighty nine point seven overall, including ninety three point four in the run block department while giving up a pressure on eleven pass block snaps. Excellent performance from the rookie third rounder. So now you have people coming out of the woodworks. Coming out of the wood shop, coming out of the forest, coming out of the closet, saying that Matt Parrott should be the starter on Thursday at left tackle. And then you have Andrew Thomas starting at right tackle. And it's like, didn't we just say that Cam Fleming was the highest graded offensive lineman through four or five weeks? What is going on? Which make, leads me to believe, like, I don't know what to believe. <laughs> like, what is PFF? What is it? What are they looking at? Why would you sit Fleming if he's the highest graded? And why are you going to sit Andrew Thomas, your first rounder, just play your third rounder oh yeah yeah but hey maybe that's maybe that is the answer can Fleming play center I don't know I guess Gates is doing all right Giants had converted 63 percent of uh third down so which is noise but yet again Washington converted 53 percent we just cannot figure out third down Washington dominated the time of possession and that's pretty much why Jones had only 19 pass attempts 12 of 19 for 112 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Those look, those look like my high school numbers, but better, <laughs> obviously. He also led the team in rushing seven carries, 74 yards. We got to start design. Uh, we got to start doing more of these design runs with him. We just have to. They work, and we pick up tons of yardage. And it keeps the defense on their toes, you know? They're going to have to start account- accounting for him. And if we can hold the linebacker, the spy, whoever's on him, keeping tabs on him, you know, to, to make sure he doesn't run with it. That means that someone's going to come can fill in behind. And then you have yet another route over the top and then you can pick and choose my man. That's where, that's where the money's at. Freeman had a decent game, 18 carries, 61 yards. I mean, this is what you're going to get from him. You're going to, he's going to, he averages about, you know, a little more than three yards, but at least he's averaging a little more than three yards. Say it every week. You know, at least it's not averaging one or two. I'll take three yards in a cloud of dust. And it looks like he's moving a little bit better now. You know, it looks like he's able to evade some tackles and he's hitting the hole a little bit harder, faster. I had someone uh, comment on the my Devonta Freeman video that he's not even a top 20 running back in the NFL. And I'm like, yeah, I, no one's arguing that. <laughs> and then he said, just saying. I'm like, well, well, I'm just saying, would you rather have Deion Lewis handling 18 carries a game? <laughs> no. Slayton only two grabs for 41 yards, but he did have the touchdown. Uh, obviously hampered. I don't know. I mean, he, I guess we're going to go over the injury report in a little bit, but it looks like he is in a limited practice. So I guess that's a good sign. Uh, I don't know that he's going to be super effective on Thursday. Ingram, two catches, 30 yards, three targets. Meh. Caden Smith, three targets, three catches, 15 yards. Golden Tate, one catch, 11 yards. Ai Chihuahua. I mean, he's just fallen off a cliff. And maybe that's on Garrett. You know, you can't rule out what Garrett has been calling. And I'll say this, like, at least, <laughs> I don't know, can't believe I'm about to say this, but what if you had Shermer still calling plays with this defense? Would we see more wins than we are right now? I, I can't believe I just said that, but it's like Garrett is not, in my mind, is not calling that much better a game than Shermer. Logan Ryan led the team in tackles yet again. Sack and a tackle for loss. Blake Martinez, 14 tackles. Holy shit. Tay Crowder, 10 tackles. I mean, what a find. Mr. Irrelevant. Very relevant for us lately. A lot of tackles, a lot of big plays. And, uh, and then we find out, yeah, he's injured. Hamstring, placed on the IR. Has to sit out for at least three games, which... So he'll miss, obviously miss the Philly game. He'll miss the Tampa game. And then he'll miss the the next Washington game. So when you see IR, you get a little like, 
and it was a hamstring injury at that. So it's like, I'm back in this hamstring injury. Man. I mean, I know, what was it? Uh, Slayton had a hammy issue that prevented him from playing early on in the season. I know the OBJ, his rookie season, uh, had a hammy problem that kept him out a few games. So it's, I'm not discounting or discrediting the hamstring at all. My hammies are feeling kind of tight right now, to be honest. TBH. Um, it just sucks. Like, such a big game. And to have that carryover in Philly would have been so awesome. But we do have David Mayo back. He was active for the Washington game. I, he's probably going to see a lot more snaps in uh, the game on Thursday. Peppers had another good game, although he got a little shaken up, which was uh, concerning, a little scary. Leonard Williams had another good game. Uh, he had the sack. Kyler Frack wrote the sack, forced fumble, who was just playing top-notch football. Dalvin Tomlinson had seven. Th- this is where it's like, Who's actually counting tackles? Because he had seven assists and one solo. That seemed that I've never seen a stat line like that. One solo, seven assists. Okay. <laughs> um, Graham Gano was money as always. And uh Riley Dixon, not a great game. He did have a punt inside the 20, but average 35 yards, long of 46. Yet again, only two punts. McKissick had a day. Eight carries, 41 yards. Allen, 31 of 42, 282 touchdowns and interception. Washington is the only team in the NFL to not have a player with 60 or more rushing yards in any game this season. So you think, you thought our rushing attack was anemic. Washington can't get it figured out either. Terry McLaurin had another, had a, had a pretty good day. Dozen targets, seven catches, 74 yards. Logan Thomas, three catches, 42 yards and a touchdown. Montez Sweat. Two tackle, two solos, one tackle for a loss. Ryan Kerrigan, one tackle, one solo, one sack, one tackle for a loss. Chase Young, two total tackles, one solo, one assist, one tackle for a loss. So it's like Sweat, Kerrigan, and Young didn't have like a crazy good game. If you can hold that trio to those kind of numbers, you should be having yourself a pretty good, decent day. 